Hello guys. So in this session, we are going to learn Kubernetes logging using ELK stack and file bid. So let's start. So first of all, as you can see here, I mentioned some prerequisites. So first of all, AWS account with Ubuntu 24.04 LTS EC2 instance. And here we need T3.x large instance because in this instance, there is a four CPU. Okay, so to Kubernetes logging using ELK stack and file bit, we need a four, inst a four CPU. So that's why we need this T3.x large instance. Okay, then after that, we need to install Minikube, KubeCTR, and Helm also. Okay, and we need a basic knowledge of Kubernetes. Okay, so let's start. So first of all, let's set up the Ubuntu EC2 instance like let's install the prerequisites so as you can see here i have successfully launched my instance and as you can see instance type is t3.x large and here i have successfully connected to my terminal now let's update the system package let's do the apt update Then after that, let's install the essential tools like curl, wget, and apt transport https. So let's install this. Then after that, let's install a Docker, a container runtime that will be used as a VM driver for Minikube. So for Minikube, we need to install Docker first. Okay, so as you can see, it's done. Then after that, let's give the permission to our Docker using these two commands. And the second one. Okay, after that, let's check if the system support virtualization. Then let's install the KVM and related tools. So it's installing KVM and its related tools. So it takes few seconds to install KVM. So as you can see, it's done, right? So let's clear the screen. Then after that, let's add the virtualization group. So let's run these two commands to add virtualization group. As you can see, it's already exist. And the second one is, okay, it's also done. Now let's related group. So first of all, new group and the next one. Okay, it's done. Now let's install Minikube and kubectl. So using curl command, so that's why we are going to install this. Okay, it's done. Then the next is let's install to this particular location and making it available. Then it's done. Let's check the Minikube version. As you can see, the Minikube version. Now let's install and download the kubectl. Okay, it's done. 
now make it kubectl binary to executable then move to this particular location and now it's installed now let's check the version of your kubectl as you can see the details of our kubectl okay so it's done now it's time to install helm sorry firstly we need to start our mini cube so as you can see to start mini cube there is a four cpus right so let's start the mini cube so as you can see it's starting our mini cube okay so as you can see it successfully start our mini cube right okay it's done then now let's install helm okay so let's install helm then after that change the permission and now it's time to install helm using this get helm.sh command and now is downloading it's done if you want to check the version of your helm then simply run helm version of that. as you can see the details of your helm okay so we have successfully installed helm mini cube and cube city also and deleted rules okay now let's add the elastic helm repository so for that let's run this command to add okay as you can see elastic has been added to a repository then after that let's update your helm repo okay it's successfully updated now let's deploy the elk stack and file bit so first of all let's create the elastic search values.yaml file and this file configures elastic resource and okay so let's create a file and in this file, there is a data resource, request, memory, limit, CPU, and so on the details. Okay, so let's save the file and exit. And after that, let's deploy the Elasticsearch using the command helm install Elasticsearch, Elastic, Elasticsearch, hyphen F, and then your file name. As you can see, name Elasticsearch, last deployed, date and time, namespace default, status deploy, revision 1. Okay, it's done. Right. Now, the next file is file with values.yaml file. So, in this file, there is a data. So, there is a file bit, then as you can see, your processors, then output of log stash, and the port number of log stash, and so on the details and let's deploy for this file bit so as you can see status is deployed okay then the next step is next file is log stash values.yaml file right so let's create this file So in this file, as you can see, first of all, here the extra environments that the environments and the other secret key reference, right? That and you can see a name Elasticsearch master credential username, keys username. Okay. Then Elasticsearch, your 
सीक्रेट की रेफरेंस ने मेरा सिक्स वर्ष मास्टर क्रेडेंशियल एंड द कीज पासवर्ड इन लॉक स्टेज देर इज एस टी टी पी एस होस्ट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो दैट मीन्स एन आई पी एड्रेस कैन एक्सेस दिस देन द आउटपुट एज यू कैन सी योर देन सीक्रेट माउन सर्विस इज क्लस्टर आई पी एंड सो ऑन द डिटेल्स राइट सो लेट सेव द फाइल एंड एक्स एट एंड लेट्स डिप्लॉय टू दिस फाइल दैट मीन्स द लॉक स्टैश As you can see, status is deployed at end time. Okay. Now the next and last file is Kibara Values dot YAML file. So let's create this file and the data of that file. Okay. So the type is node port and port Kibara port is five five six zero one. Then resource request CPU memory limit CPU and so on. Okay, so let's save the file and exit. Now let's deploy this Kibana. Okay, so there is a, a command to deploy Kibana. Okay, so let's deploy this. So to deploy Kibana, it take few seconds to deploy. wait for few seconds so as you can see it's successfully deployed right you can see the date and timing and the status is deployed okay it's done now let's access the elk stack in our browser so how to access so first of all let's list the service to get the kibana node port details so let's check kubectl get service as you can see the elastic master elastic master headless then kibana kubernetes log stash Lock stash. Okay. Now let's check the pods are running or not. So as you can see, uh, all has run. If only key bar is remaining because it's thirty nine seconds ago. So wait for few seconds. Okay, it's also running. As you can see now, it's key bar also running. Okay. Okay. Now let's access key bar in browser. So first of all, let's forward the key bar port to here and then. Now let's access in browser. So copy your instance IP, hit on browser, and okay. So as you can see here, uh, our pods are running, right? You can, you can see kubectl get pods. After that, you can see there is a, a pods here, and which is uh, all of our running. Okay, you can see one of one, one of one, one of one, and the status is running. Okay. Now let's access the Kibana. In our browser. So first of all, as you can see here, I have successfully uh, here I have forwarding the port. You can see kubectl port forward address zero point zero point zero point zero. That means any IP address can access it. And Kibana port number is five six zero one. So let's access this Kibana into our browser. So first of all, let's copy our instance IP. Hit on browser, and the Kibana port number is five six zero one. After that, as you can see here, welcome to Elastic. So it will ask your username and password. Okay, so let's enter username and password. Which so let's access the username and password. So first of all, as you can see, open the duplicate tab and retrieve the Elastic credential. So first of all, let's run this command to get the username of Kibana. So I'm going to open this duplicate tab, and here I'm going to access the Username username is elastic. So let's enter elastic, and after that the password is here. So let's enter this command to access the password. Okay. So as you can see, this is our password, right? So let's enter. Click on login.
So as you can see here, we have successfully logged into our Kibana. So you can see, welcome to Elastic. Okay. So as you can see, this is the dashboard, right? Okay. So now you can see a welcome to Elastic. So now click on explore on my own. And you can see your enterprise searches, observability, security, analytics, and so on the details, right? Okay. So after that here, click on this and go to the logs. Okay, here. Okay. So as you can see in this stream, you can see here, Below, you can see the logs generated. You can see the data and timing of logs that generated. Right. You can see here. Okay. So, this ELK stack and file bit provides reverse logging and visualization and helping monitor and troubleshoot your Kubernetes cluster efficiently. And by following this guide, you can successfully set up the ELK stack and file bit and Kubernetes logging. Okay. So that's it. It's done. So in this session, uh, we have learned Kubernetes logging using ELK stack and file bit setup and ELK stack and file bit for Kubernetes logs and how to set up ELK stack and file bit for Kubernetes logging. Right. So that's it. Okay. So the ELK stack is a popular solution for collecting analysis and visualizing log data and combined with Filebit and it becomes a powerful tool for managing logs from Kubernetes application. And this guide will walk to you through the setting up ELK stack and Filebit on the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so thank you for watching and I hope you understand.